The story of Ryan White lives on tonight. The Rusheville teenager made national headlines just trying to go to school while also battling AIDS when that disease was still largely unknown. Eyewitness News reporter Matt McCutcheon sat down with his mother as we near the 25th anniversary of his passing. Was there ever a time where you said, why me? Why did this have to happen to me and to our family? Well, Ryan never said it, but I did a lot. <laughs> um, because I felt like with him being born with hemophilia, that was kind of a curse in itself. In 1985, at the age of 13, Ryan White received a tainted blood treatment infecting him with AIDS. His Rusheville school fought to keep him out. Knowledge about the disease then was low, while fear was high. I wanted to go to school and be like everybody else. Because, you know, it's so fun sitting at home all day. His smiles hid the struggles of fighting a disease and having to move to a new community for acceptance. Ryan appeared on TV shows, was in a movie, and spoke in front of politicians. I said, Ryan, how do you do it? How do you keep from getting so nervous? He said, Mom, let me give you some advice. He said, just don't try to use those big fancy words. And he said, you'll be okay. <laughs> Jeannie White Ginder continues his legacy for education and a cure. The family that many had turned their back on suddenly had friends and celebrities from around the world. Very sad. We never kind of got caught up in it, but at the same time, it's, it's unbelievable. The king of pop flew to the White's home with Donald Trump when Ryan died. <laughs> oh. Elton John continues to be a constant in the family's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's for Ryan. The night he sang this song at Farm Aid in Indianapolis, Ryan took a turn for the worse. To laugh and cry, to live and die. His packed funeral brought First Lady Barbara Bush and dozens of dignitaries. In the 25 years since, Jeannie has remarried and moved to Florida. I hated to leave Ryan's grave. I think that was the, the worst part because I, I enjoyed being so close to, you know, him. But he's with her every day. And this is his PSA he did for the... Indiana State Board of Health. On these pages. I think the emptiness from losing a child is forever. I mean, it's just a daily thing. There's a chapter about Lou Gaynus. He was my inspiration to, you know, to really fight through and, you know, take one dive at a time. The Olympic diver felt compelled to meet the Indiana teenager. He was struggling with coming out as a gay man while living with HIV. It puts a smile on my face to think that that Ryan did so much in the eyes of the AIDS epidemic. Matt McCutcheon, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. He was such an inspiration. Now the two are in town for a new book about Ryan on the 25th anniversary of his passing. The book launch and conversation takes place tomorrow at 6 p.m. It's at the Indiana Historical Society and we have more information for you on our website, WTHR.com.